I'm making my own homemade stains for wood models and kits on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, a few months ago, I was watching a video by Martin Wellberg in his Five Minutes Friday series. By the way, that is my very favorite series on YouTube right now, Martin's Five Minute Friday, and the video in question, I'll post a link to in the description down below. Now, in this video, he was talking about making his own homemade washes for weathering scenery. And I got an idea watching that video about making some homemade wood stains with a very similar technique to the one Martin used in his video. So I bought some materials and did a little bit of experimentation, and I have found a great way to make some fantastic looking stains that I can tint to exactly the shade and color that I want and use on wood structures, whether they are scratch built or whether they are craftsman kits. Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made the stains that I've used, so let's head on over to the workbench and I'll show you how I did it. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. All of the materials that I use in this video are available on Amazon, and I will link them all under my Amazon pick of the week in the description down below this video if you'd like to try these techniques for yourself. The bulk of the stains that I am making are made from distilled water. Distilled water is important because minerals in hard water can leave stains that mar the surface of your wood and your models. I just buy cheap distilled water at the dollar store. The second ingredient is Flow-Aid. Now I'm using Liquitex Flow-Aid, but there are other brands out there. Then the color for my stains comes from acrylic inks. The nice thing about inks for stains and washes is that you don't have to worry about the pigment breaking down like they often do with acrylic paints. I bought these little two ounce dropper bottles to make and store my stains. I get them by the dozen pretty cheap on Amazon. Again, link in the description. I need to have a means of roughly measuring the amounts of my ingredients. This doesn't have to be absolutely precise, just close. I'm not mixing volatile chemicals here. To do this, I use a ruler and measure the straight side of a bottle. I'm looking for some measurement that's divisible easily by 10. In this case, five centimeters is near the top of the bottle, so I will call five centimeters full on these bottles. I use a Sharpie to mark the five centimeter mark. I then need to know 10% of full, which of course is five millimeters in this case. So I make a mark at five millimeters from the bottom of the bottle. I start mixing my stain by adding 10% flow aid. So I fill the bottle to the bottom line. I then add 90% distilled water. I fill the bottle to the top line with this. I put the cap on the bottle and shake it well before adding any color. I'm mixing three colors of stain today. The first is a black stain. I started by adding about 10 drops of carbon black ink. Now plain black tends to be a little stark, so I like to add a little bit of brown to the black. I mixed a few drops of raw umber in with the carbon black. I shake the bottle well and then test the stain on a scrap piece of wood from the carrier sheet of an old model. The key is to mix the color light at first, test it, then add more ink to get the color and transparency that you're looking for. The second color I wanted was a nice brown natural wood color. I started by mixing burnt sienna with burnt umber in equal parts, but this was far too light. I added more burnt umber several times, but the stain was still very light each time. I eventually mixed a couple drops of carbon black in the stain, which helped. I ultimately lost count of how many drops of burnt umber I added to this bottle, but it was a lot. 
Each time I added ink, I tested the stain on the wood, and I eventually got the nice honey wood natural color that I was looking for. Finally, I wanted to mix a green stain for adding the look of mossy, moldy wood that you would often see, especially on the north face of old wood structures. For this, I added sap green ink and a little bit of burnt umber. Again, the first mixture was too light, so I added more green a couple of times. This color was tested on top of the other colors of stain on the wood. I would never use just the green, but would use it to highlight on top of other stains, the black and the brown, to get a truly aged wood look. Finally, when I had all three colors close to what I wanted, I tested them on the face of some shiplap cut carrier sheets. It's not unusual for me to use two or three coats of stains to achieve just the right color combination, so I experimented with this technique. When finished, I had some aged wood and some natural wood colors that I was really happy with. I labeled the bottles with the colors that were used in each stain. I had planned to write the exact formula on each bottle, but the process of getting them just right took so many steps that I couldn't say exactly what the formula was. What I do know is that I'm very happy with the initial results that I've gotten from these stains, and I will definitely keep using them and keep experimenting with more colors. Well, again, I am very happy with the initial results that I've gotten from experimenting with and trying some of these homemade stains. And I'm definitely going to be doing some work experimenting with other colors and other shades in the future. And I'll let you see how all of those turn out as we work on them going forward. Of course, I am very happy with the way these worked on my Miner Supply kit build. And if you haven't seen the video of that kit build, you'll want to check it out. There's a link to it in the corner of your screen right now. Also, be sure and check out those Amazon Picks of the Week. All of the materials that I used for these stains are linked down there in the description down below. And while you're there, you may want to check out the many other great links that can save you money and also bring you to some great resources, all in the description down below. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, be sure and check out the links on your screen. And join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you there. 10, Lizzie?